Hey guys, just wanted to do a video today that was very simple and basic for all you nutritarians, aspiring nutritarians. Um, nutritarians are getting back into the game, whatever it is. This video is about the six week plan for being um, on the Eat to Live plan. And this is found on page 216 of Eat to Live. It's right here. Eat to Live is, of course, as any nutritarian knows, kind of the Bible of how you're supposed to be eating in order to re reverse and prevent all sorts of diseases that afflict standard American dieters. So you basically change the way that you eat in order to lose weight, get healthy, have all those really great benefits. And this page 216, I mean, you can tell I've actually spilled water on this page. I've um, opened up to this page so many times. There's a big crease in the back of my book here because this is, I think, the most important page for you to get yourself familiar with um, after you've read the whole book. Of course, reading the whole book is very important and I'm gonna put a link for this down below. If you really wanna lose weight, get to your healthy weight, your happy weight, get to the sort of body condition condition where your body will heal itself and prevent and reverse a lot of things that you may have already have going on in your body or make sure that you never get those things, you know, heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, stuff like that. All the good stuff, well, the bad stuff as it were. This is basically how you should eat. So I'm going to just run through and give a little bit of my experience on this since I've been doing Eat to Live for a while now, about Wow, close to four, oh, four years, almost four years now. <laughs> so, um, okay, so the Eat to Live six week plan. The unlimited foods that you can eat, as much as you want of all raw vegetables, and your goal is one pound daily. Now, if you've never tried to measure that out and find out how much that is, that's a massive amount of food. <laughs> um, cooked green and non-green nutrient rich vegetables. Your goal is a pound of those daily. So we're talking things like eggplant, mushrooms, peppers, onions, tomatoes, cauliflower, things like that. Like not the not starchy ones, right? So not corn, not potatoes, not sweet potatoes, not that real heavy starchy stuff, but the non-green nutrient rich. So that means lots of nutrients, low calories. Also unlimited is beans, legumes, bean sprouts, and tofu. Your goal is one cup daily. Don't have all tofu all the time, right? Don't have this kind of processed food all the time. You really wanna be leaning towards unprocessed food. So beans, legumes, things like that are gonna be your best friends there. And fresh fruits, at least four daily. So the idea here with these unlimited foods, in the beginning, when you first start Eat to Live, the whole idea is that you eat enough of these unlimited foods that you feel so full at every meal. You eat three times a day and you really try to stick to just three times a day with no snacking. That really is going to give you the, um, can you hear that scratching? That's my cat in the bathroom. Gosh, how annoying. Can you be done? So if you can eat this many unlimited foods, that's really gonna keep you full throughout the day. Um, you really wanna try to just do three meals a day, no snacking. And the point there is people are always like, oh my gosh, only three meals, I can't snack, I'm so used to snacking. The idea is if you eat big enough meals, we're talking like massive salads, like the size of your head or bigger. I'm always saying like the size of my torso because these salads are like so, so big. Um, and chopped up real finely so you get a ton of fiber, a ton of bulk, all in this one bowl. It takes a long time to eat these salads, but if you eat enough of them and you have virtually unlimited amounts of foods that you can put in there, if you have salads that are that big, you have meals that are that big with that much cooked and raw vegetables and things like that, you never get hungry, trust me. And the idea is if you do get hungry, you're not eating enough. <laughs> so stick to these unlimited foods and just add more and more of them if you feel that you're hungry. And then here's the limited foods, okay? So cooked starchy vegetables or whole grains. So we're talking, um, this is the sweet potatoes, the corn, um, whole grains like wild rice, brown rice, things like this that are still intact. Quinoa, you know, all those kinds of things. Then butternut or acorn squash, white potatoes, rice, sweet potatoes, bread, cereal. And so Amongst all these things, um, not more than one serving of that, which is one cup daily, okay? I found that when I started the plan, I was triggered a lot by um, grains and foods that were made out of grains. So a little pitas and breads and things like that were impossible for me to just have only a little bit of. So when I first started doing Eat to Live, I just cut those things out completely because 
I knew I didn't really have the willpower to <laughs> just have a little bit at a time because those are the things I would end up having way too much of. So you might want to think of that for yourself. Um, that's just what I had to do. And over time, I, I just got rid of those addictions and it wasn't that hard anymore. So I kind of got over it over you know a period of time, but it really took me kind of just cutting it all out to be able to do that. Um, then very, very important is the raw nuts and seeds. So you want to have one ounce maximum per day. What's an ounce of nuts and seeds? It's like, like that much. It's a tiny, tiny bit, right? It's not a lot. The reason that we do only one ounce of nuts and seeds in the first six week plan is because nuts and seeds are so dense calorie wise. They have a lot of really great nutrition, but they're so dense calorie wise that just like grains, it's hard to, um, I mean, it's very easy to overdo that. So you wanna make sure that you only just have a little portion. Once you get off the six week plan, you can have a little bit more nuts and seeds, but still you wanna really um, kind of limit the amount of those that you eat, okay? Avocado, same with avocado, you can have two ounces max per day. Dried fruit, two tablespoons max per day. That's the one that I kind of sometimes don't do as well on. That was the one that I, I you know, in the beginning was really, well, I did a little bit too much of that. Um, so just keep in mind what your weaknesses are. And then also ground flax seeds, which are a limited food. However, the point is, with ground flax seeds, you're supposed to have one tablespoon max per day, but it's a food that you're supposed to have every single day. So. Um, but let me sort of quantify that a little bit. So for me, what I would do is with the raw nuts and seeds and the um, ground flax seeds, I would make sure that I had those every single day. I would make sure I stuck to the amount. And the other ones, because I didn't have very good willpower in the beginning, I didn't have any avocado, barely, and I didn't have any cooked starchy vegetables or whole grains. And I have read um, in you know questions and answers from Dr. Furman, it's totally okay to not have any starches or grains in your day. They are completely not necessary. Whereas flax seeds and um, raw nuts and seeds are important every single day. So of this list, in the limited section, you should definitely have raw nuts and seeds and ground flax seeds. And your ground flax seeds don't count towards the raw nuts and seeds. The off-limit section, which we all <laughs> struggle with in the beginning, it's really hard, I know. So dairy products, in the six-week plan, you really want to avoid all dairy products. So we're talking cheese, um, any kind of milk, even skim milk, things like that, off-limits if it comes from an animal. No deals, can't have it. Um, not that you can't have it, is that you don't want to have it anymore, okay? <laughs> That's what it is. Any animal products. So animal products meaning meat. Of course, like I said, the dairy, of course, too. Anything that comes from an animal. So meat, eggs, dairy, all those kinds of things are off limits um, for the first 42 days. Between meal snacks, as I was saying, you really want to keep it to just three meals a day and no snacking. This is going to retrain you, and it takes a long time. It took me about two and a half to three years to get used to this, but I had to be very strict and I wasn't strict in the beginning and I really didn't do that for a long time on purpose. And then it wasn't until I actually did the, the 10 and 20 detox program from Dr. Furman that I actually kind of retrained myself to do three meals a day. And now I really, really like that. <laughs> um, fruit juice, super, super important. No fruit juice. Why? Because fruit juice is only sugar and water basically. And um, it doesn't have, it, it may have some type, like a tiny, tiny bit of nutrition as far as like maybe some vitamin C or something like that. But really, what you really want to have always for the rest of your life is say a smoothie where you blend up the whole fruit or you blend up the whole vegetable. So you can get all that fiber in there as well instead of just drinking sugar water, basically. And the last thing that we keep out of our diet, actually there's one missing here, but the last thing we keep out of our diet is oils. So for sure, no oils. And that means absolutely no olive oil, no coconut oil. These oils that everyone is saying is super healthy, none of those whatsoever. Um, yeah, for real. <laughs> you know, I get this question a lot. Really? Like no oils? I can't really have any oils? Yeah, for real, no oils. You find ways of cooking without oil, like water sauteing um, and even dry sauteing for some things like onions and... Uh, mushrooms is very easy to cook these kinds of foods once you get used to it without any oil and you'll find actually that what you liked before wasn't the taste of the vegetable it was the taste of the oil and the salt so of course salt is another thing that you want to um, 100% keep off keep out of your diet in the first six weeks he doesn't say that here but he says it in other places in the book and that one is really important because it's very much like oil where salt can become a crutch and when you start on the plan you might use oil and salt just to stay on it and then it really does become your crutch and you can't stop um, 
And so for me, it took a lot of training over, I mean years you guys, it took years to get to the point where I could do only three meals a day, no snacking, where I could do no oil, where I could do no salt, um, and that sort of thing. So it really does take a lot of training and it's not easy <laughs> at all. I promise you it's not, I know it's not. But it is possible to um, within, I mean just within about three or four weeks your taste buds change. So you start to really appreciate the flavors of these vegetables and these fruits and the beans and things. You can retrain your taste buds to, um, to really love this food. And then um, the same with salt and oil, you know, as I was saying, it really is true. Like you really before you loved the taste of salt and oil and you realize how amazing these foods taste without that stuff after a period of time. And then over more time, you can work on the three meals a day thing, or you can, you know, maybe you want to start with the oil or start with the salt or whatever. Um, Furman says it's very important to kind of do all at once, and that's what the whole 42, pl um, 42 day plan is all about. And I agree with him. I think it's important to just try to do them all at once. Um, but that's not what I did. <laughs> um, I really couldn't handle it emotionally. I needed to take some more time to do that. So I didn't give up shrimp for probably two years. Um, and fully, I mean, I didn't eat it a lot, but I just didn't give it up. I didn't give up salt for probably, um, a year and a half. Oil I gave up pretty quickly because I realized that was something that really contributed to a lot of empty calories and all it does is just kind of flavor things. It doesn't actually really do anything for you. Um, if you wonder about that and you're like, yeah, but where do you get all the oils and healthy stuff? Um, I made a video about, you know, how do you <laughs> get oils into your diet if you don't eat oil? Um, and it's actually a very simple answer. So check out that video if you want to know more about that. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview about, um, what the 42 day plan entails when you're getting started on um, Eat to Live. This list here, you kind of have to just wrap your head around it. So if you're just getting into Eat to Live, just jump in and just try some recipes. One of my favorite things to say is just try one new recipe a week. And that way after a year, you'll know, 50, you'll know at least 52 new things. You'll know way more because you'll be learning a lot more, but you'll know a lot of different recipes that you can use throughout your life. That's kind of the best way to get started, I feel like. And so just stick with it, try, try to wrap your head around it, and also use the buddy system. Try to meet somebody else who's a nutritarian. There's a lot of really great Facebook groups of people that are doing just this. They're all free and they're full of people that are super supportive so I hope that you found this interesting and informative and that it kind of helps you wrap your head around a little bit also with knowing a little bit of my experience having been a nutritarian for quite a while that it wasn't all <laughs> easy for me either but if you have any questions let us all know down below we'll answer we'll talk about it if you appreciated this video and you got something out of it please subscribe to my YouTube channel pass it on have your friends subscribe as well and comment and like this video to show me that you appreciate it so thank you so much for watching as always. I will see you guys soon. Bye.